بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم 5090 او لیول بایولوجی جون 25 از دی کوسچن پیپر 22 اینڈ دس از دی سیکنڈ ویڈیو ان وچ وی ایکسپلین 5 6 اینڈ 7 کوسچن رحمان رحیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کوسچن نمبر 5 رائزوم میوکر پسیلس از اے فنگس فاؤنڈ ان پائلز اف ڈیڈ پلانٹ ویجیٹیشن اٹ ہیز این اپٹیمم گروتھ ریٹ بٹوین 60 ڈگری سیلسیس اینڈ 70 ڈگری سیلسیس یو سی دی فنگس has enzymes and those enzymes have an optimum temperature of between 60 and 70 degrees celsius identify the name of the kingdom and genus of this organism name of the kingdom is fungi or fungus you could say fungus or you could have said fungi and uh, what is the what is the genus genus comes first so that will be rhizomucor and the r has to be capital rhizomucor part 2 give two of the main features of organism classified in the kingdom named in a1 so what is the main thing about uh, the fungus uh, kingdom the cell wall is made of chitin they are heterotrophic or you can say they are saprophytic and they have filamentous hyphae and they are eukaryotic so cell wall of chitin heterotrophic filamentous hyphae and eukaryotic so any two of these there are four points there were four mark scheme points you have to give me any two of these i'm not saying you have to give me all four of these then it says part 3 explain how piles of dead plant vegetation so there's all these leaves fallen on the floor plant vegetation can have temperatures much higher than the surrounding environment why would a lot of leaves lying around on the floor dead plant vegetation can have temperatures much higher than the surrounding environment because you see the fungi there are two types of organisms which de- do decomposition bacteria and fungi so bacteria and fungi are the decomposers that's one mark they respire when they respire they release energy and the vegetation layer is an insulating layer so you see the things is just like there are too many people in a room it becomes very hot because we are all emitting heat we are all at 37 degrees celsius so why would the plant piles of dead vegetation is because of all the bacteria and fungi respiring and heat being released so bacteria and fungi are decomposers they are respiring and so the respiration is taking place heat or slash you can say energy is released and vegetation layers insulating insulating what does that mean it means all those dead leaves which are lying on top of them they sort of don't allow the heat to go away just like you have a hot pot in which you keep your rotis hot so it's insulated it insulates it and you, uh, it doesn't lose the heat it doesn't uh, lose heat the roti remains hot so it's uh, the vegetation uh, acts as an insulating layer now coming to the b part of the question The fungus produces an enzyme called pectinase. Scientists extracted pectinase from this fungus and investigated the effect of pH on its activity at 20 degrees Celsius. Now you can see here figure 5.1 shows a graph of their results. So the pH is 1 to 11 and there is no activity between 2 and 3 but then the activity increases as the pH goes from 3 goes towards 4 and it peaks at about 4 point something. 4.24 pH and then it starts to decrease and then there's no activity at this point and at this point so there's no activity before 3 and no activity after 7.5 now you look at the graph explain the results of the pH explain the result for the pH range 2 to 7 2 to 7 you look at the pH range so 2 27 explain the result it didn't say describe describe would have meant no biology it says explain the result and four marks so now you can see that the 2 to 3 and between 2 and 3 i'm going to rub it off so that you can see it as well so 2 to 3 it is zero activity so that means the ph 2 to 3 the enzyme is denatured 
At 2 and 3, the enzyme is denatured. So if you put the enzyme and you had pH 2, there would be no activity. Because the enzyme is denatured, meaning the active site of the enzyme has changed shape. So substrate no longer fits the active site. The optimum pH at 4.5. So this is the optimum pH at which it works best. This is about 4.5. Here. You draw a straight line down and I'm not getting it very right. So somewhere here. So this would be 4.5, somewhere here. And then substrate at this point, at optimum pH of 4.5, the substrate and the active site are complementary. So a lot of enzyme substrate complexes are being formed and it starts to denature. It starts to denature above 4.5. So as the pH is increased, so this is also, that is why in some books it is called partial denaturation. Because it's still working, but the rate, the activity rate has greatly decreased. So that is why it's called partial denaturation, meaning that the active site is slightly changed shape, so it is taking a little longer for the product form. So less product form per unit time, but still it's working. It stops working at this point, 7.4 to 11, it doesn't work. So how would we write it? pH 2 to 3 enzyme denatured, active site change shape, substrate no longer fits active site, optimum pH is 4.5, substrate and active site are complementary at pH 4.5, enzyme substrate complexes form and denature above 4.5 pH. So this would be, there are quite a few mark scheme points, you don't have to give me all of these, any four of these would have got you your four marks. Then it says, on figure y one draw a graph to suggest the results expected at 40, 55 degrees Celsius. The experiment was repeated at a temperature of 55 degrees Celsius. So first it was at a lower temperature, now it's at a higher temperature. So the rate will be the same, but the optimum will be the same, pH 4.5. Rate, activity rate of enzyme would of course be higher because uh, more temperature means more kinetic energy. So more enzyme substrate complex is formed. So the rate would be more than what it was here. So let's do with the graph. So we would see a graph like this with the activity a little more, but of course the pH 4.5 would still be the optimum. This would still be the optimum. So, I mean, mine is not a very smooth line, but it should be a smooth line, which should be of course more than this graph. And then the part three says, name an industrial process in which we use pectin as fruit juice production. When we add this to fruit pulp, so that more juice is produced because it breaks down the cell wall and the juice is released. So fruit juice production would be the industrial use. Question number six. The nucleus of a cell contains DNA molecules that control cell function. Figure six point where the diagram shown one of these DNA molecules. Look at it carefully. Using information on figure 6.1, state the name of the structure labeled T. What is the structure labeled T? It's a chromosome. I hope you all know that. State the name of the unit of DNA labeled Q. It's a nucleotide. Then state the letter of the base that pairs with G. C is actually guanine and cytosine. But I think you all are not supposed to know the names in O levels, but this is what we do in A levels. So the letter is G. So the, the base pairing rule, rule is ATGC. I say remember it at government college. So AT will, if it's T, if it's T on this side, this side will be A. If it's uh, C on this side, it will be G. So it's always a base pairing rule ATGC. Explain. Now it says, explain how this DNA molecule controls cell function. I include an example in your answer. So DNA codes for proteins, the base sequence or the order of bases determines the sequence of amino acids. For example, uh, pepsin. So they will be, pepsin is maybe made up of 100 amino acids. Now the DNA dictates the sequence of amino acids because you only have 20 amino acids. So in which sequence are we going to put them? Is amino acid number 5 coming first, then amino acid number 10, then 11, then 5 again, then 6 again. So you see, 
the amino acid sequence is dictated by the DNA. So these I'm just right giving numbers to the amino acids because you have 20 different amino acids that we have in the world. And so what is the sequence? This sequence is dictated by the bases. Like if the bases say A, A, T, C, G, A, 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 T. Now this would dictate which amino acid comes first, which amino acid comes next. So the sequence of bases dictates, just like you use the word A, C, T, it means act. But the same word you write like this means something else. So the sequence of bases in the DNA. Bases, what do we have? We have either an A or a T or a C or a G. So the base sequence 3 then dictate for one amino acid. The next 3 dictate for the second amino acid. And the next 3 dictate for the next amino acid. So how DNA controls cell function is you, you have to give me this in the answer. So DNA codes for proteins, order of bases or the base sequence determines the sequence of amino acids. The pepsin enzyme has a specific number of amino acids in the correct sequence as dictated by the DNA. So I've given an example as well. And this could be for any enzyme, could be for amylase, could be for trypsin, could be for the hormone insulin. Everything is dictated by the DNA. Now usually the question 7 or the last question in any paper is a sort of an essay question which of course we removed the section B which used to be essay questions. Now in this question it's a very direct question and you just have to you know write everything you know about the process. Photosynthesis and transpiration are two processes that take place in a plant leaf. Explain how the structure of a leaf is adapted for photosynthesis. How is the structure of a leaf adapted for photosynthesis? Large surface area, maximum light absorption. Stomata for gaseous exchange. Then the leaf is very thin, so diffusion of gases in and out, so it's short diffusion distance. Then the air spaces in the spongy mesophyll allow the diffusion of gases. Then chloroplast present in the palisade cell and in the spongy cell and in the guard cell. They will absorb light. So chlorophyll or chloroplast present absorb light. Chloroplasts are most dense in the palisade mesophyll. Then palisade in the, is in the upper part of the leaf, so receives more light. And the xylem vessels bring water from the soil. And the epidermal cells have no, chlor no chloroplasts and they're transparent, so they allow the light to reach the underlying cells, which is that of the palisade cells. So, you have to understand this And you have to also, of course, be able to uh, write it down in proper English, not in Urdu. So this is how we are going to word it. Large surface area, so maximum light absorption. You see the broad lamina of the leaves. So this is a large surface area, then stomata for gas exchange, then thin leaves, so short diffusion distance. Air spaces allow diffusion of gases. Chloroplasts absorb light. Chloroplasts most dense in the palisade mesophyll. Palisade is in the upper part of the leaf, so receives most light. Then the xylem vessels bring water from the soil. And what do you write? You write xylem vessels bring water from the root. Oh, bhai, root mein kahan se aaya? So bring water from the soil. Epidermal cells, no chloroplasts, so that light can pass through them. So light reaches the cells. So this is for the six marks. There were a lot of mark scheme points. You had to give me any six of these. And you could get, so there were nine points. You had to give me six. So please remember, you should write more so that you get all your six marks. Then we come to the B part of the question. Uh, Transmigration is both necessary for plants and a problem for plants. Discuss this statement. Problem B, it's in a problem as well and it's also necessary as well. So like a phone is a problem as well and it is needed also by all of you and uh, you all have to decide how you're going to use it effectively and not make it a problem. So why is it necessary? Because provides uh, transpiration provides leaves with water for photosynthesis. You know, all the water is sucked up by transpiration and transport mineral ions from the roots to the leaves. So the fact that they are necessary, these are these uh, four points. Uh, provides leaves with water for photosynthesis, transport mineral ions from the roots to the leaves, then provides plant cell with the turgidity or support or turga, and cools the leaf of the plant. So these are the necessary. Then what the problems, too much water is lost. Water loss leads to wilting or death of the plant. Plants may close the stomata to prevent transpiration, which slows down photosynthesis. You see, they have an inbuilt mechanism. If there's not enough water in the soil, the stomata closes. You study this in A-levels in great detail. 
So the stomata close. Now when the stomata close, this is going to slow down photosynthesis. So the plant will, this is a way of, uh, pro the plant protects itself. Either it dies and compromises on photosynthesis or it dies and that's the end of it. No more, any photosynthesis will be taking place in a dead plant. So the necessary, uh, the necessity is provides water for photosynthesis, transport mineral ions from roots to leaves, provides support to the plant. The support is also called turgidity or turga pressure and cools the plant or the leaf. So you can see the problems, the problems would be what? Too much water is lost, it leads to wilting or death of the plant. But sometimes the plants may also close the stomata to prevent transpiration, which slows down the photosynthesis because if the stomata are closed, then there's going to be no gas exchange. So these are the necessity and these are the problems. That completes this paper. And thank you very much for watching.